Okay. Thank you so much. Um, really excited to be here today and talk just a little bit about um, who we are as Bywater Solutions and um, just a little more about open source support. So my name is Jesse and I'm the Director of Library Sales and Outreach at Bywater Solutions. Um, I was a librarian for um, several years before moving over to the vendor side of things. I was a law librarian in Tampa, Florida, and then worked for the Tampa Bay Library Consortium for many years before migrating over to Bywater Solutions. And when I first started out, I was an educator, and I would go out to libraries, and I would work one-on-one -on -one with them as they would migrate from um, a proprietary system or even some open source over to um, Koha, an, an, an open source ILS. And so during that time, I really got a good understanding of how library workflows work in all different types of libraries, you know, both public, academic, um, special libraries, um, and even school libraries. And so today, um, I'm part of the outreach team. And so what we do at Bywater Solutions is we provide support for open source software. And over the years, we've kind of grown to support um, multiple products that are open source. The first is Koha, which is an open source ILS. We also provide support for Aspen Discovery, which was, is an open source discovery layer. Um, and then Coral, which is an open source ERM or an electronic resource management tool. Um, Libkey, which is an open source kiosk management tool. Um, and that allows your patrons to come in and um, use a reservation system uh, to use either computers or make a payment for printing. Uh, and then Folio, which is an open source ERM. So the first thing I want to talk a little bit about is just the main goal of open source software. You know, Open source software was developed as a way for users to have the right to, you know, operate, copy, share, study, change, and improve the software that they work with. And since the 70s, open source software has been just thriving throughout the world. And some of you probably use it from day to day in your um, in your daily workflows, you know, if you use Mozilla Firefox or WordPress uh, or Chromium, or if you have an Android device, those are all open source products. And, and we all use them in days to days. Some of the advantages of open source software are, you know, number one, and to me, this as a librarian is always true to my heart is being part of a community. Being part of an open source community, you are connected to librarians, you know, all over that are using that software where you can share ideas, um, you know, how you're running a report, you're hooking up a new Zebra printer, and you want to get ideas of how other libraries are using it, you have access to a community of users who are just so willing and able to talk to you about what they're doing. The flexibility of the software is really nice. You know, you might be a small rural library or part of a large consortium and open source software is so flexible, it really allows you to bring your workflow in and set it up to how it will work best for your library. Open source software is really innovative, you know, you have the opportunity to um, easily connect with the community of users, depending on what the development is and really being able to connect with those users. And then of course, transparency. Generally, there are releases throughout the year, depending on what the software is. You know, there may be biannual releases or monthly releases, and it's very transparent to all users what they are. And then of course, finally, the option for free. So with that, you have the opportunity to download that software and then, of course, be a part of that community to give back. So the and the values of Bywater Solutions is number one, library empowerment. And library empowerment is important to us. When we work with our partners, we refer to our customers as partners, we want to make sure that 
they have the access to the software, they understand the software, and we want to empower them to be able to use that software to the best of their ability so they can collaborate with others and, and use that to bring a solid opportunity to their community. Data ownership. With open source software, that data is yours. You can extract your data, manipulate your data, and there's an easy way to obtain that data at any time. And then of course, the collaborative partnership. We work with you directly to be able to be a part of that community and make sure you're getting the most out of your software. So here's just a quick history of Bywater Solutions. Our company was founded back in 2009 by a librarian and one of his school partners. Um, and the first partner that we brought on was Goodwin College. Um, and from there, as we have grown, um, we've supported libraries worldwide. Majority of our partners are here in the United States, both public, academic, special, and school libraries. In 2013, we started supporting LibKey. Um, in 2017, we hit our 1,000 libraries worldwide. And then in 2018, we migrated our first um, R1 research library onto Koha. In 2019, we introduced support for Aspen Discovery, uh, which is an open source discovery layer. And then in 2020, we started supporting Folio. Now, as of today, in 2021, we support over 2,500 libraries worldwide using open source software. So Bywater Solutions in our, up here in the upper right hand corner, these are our founders, Brendan and Nate. Um, Brendan was a systems librarian and Nate was a customer service um, and sales representative um, prior to starting this company. And just a quick snapshot of all of our staff members here. Most of us are librarians. So we were working at a library um, before we transitioned over to Bywater Solutions, um, some of us in public or academic or special libraries. And every time we work with one of our partners, it gives us just a little bit of happiness that we can uh, rekindle how things worked at the library when we worked there. So um, you get a one-on-one -on -one experience with us when we migrate uh, whether it's an ILS or a discovery system, uh, our data migration specialists and developers and support teams and educators work with you to make sure that we understand what you're doing at your library to make it a successful migration and implementation. So as I mentioned earlier, we do support 2,500 libraries. Um, most of our libraries are here in the US, but we do support libraries in Canada, um, in Europe, in Asia and beyond. This is one of our partners um, in Flower Mound, Texas. Um, they've been a partner since 2016. Um, and this was one of their staff pictures that we always get really excited about when they share those pictures with us. Now, as for the services that we provide, we provide services for migration um, of your data, whether you're coming from you know, an ILS or an ERM or moving to a discovery system. And then of course the implementation, we provide education of that particular software. So if you are doing an ILS migration, we provide the education so you can understand how that product works. And um, we also provide ongoing education. Um, if you visit bywatersolutions.com, you'll see we have a full educational suite where you can view self-paced learning. Um, we have some weekly vlogs and digital magazines that we publish on all of our products. So our users have a full educational suite of materials. We offer hosting. Um, hosting is um, for all of our products, um, we um, provide um, safe and secure hosting in the cloud, um, as well as backups of your material. 
We do development for the open source community. So all of our team members are part of one of the communities that we partake in. So whether it's Koha or Aspen or Coral uh, or LibKey or Folio, um, we're a part of that community. And then of course support, which is our bread and butter. And we're a little bit different than other vendors out there as our number one goal for your library is support. So no matter how small the question is, um, or even if you wanna start doing something different in your library, um, you can submit a ticket to us, you can call us on the phone or even jump. We have a Slack channel where our partners come in and they chat with us and chat with other libraries. So now I'll talk a little bit in more detail about the services that we provide. So with the data migration, the first thing we do is you work with um, a data migration librarian. Um, the migration is really scheduled to tailored and it, we want it to fit the needs of your staff in your library. Um, we wanna make sure that there's zero downtime. Um, so when we migrate you, we set up a schedule that meets your team and your workflows. As far as our support go, it's 24 seven. Um, so whether that question is coming, you know, at eight o'clock at night, we do have staff members throughout all time zones. Um, so we have somebody there, if you call us on the phone, you'll actually talk to a, a real person. Um, and, and we all share those support calls. So you'll talk to an individual who can get you connected to the right person. And then of course, as far as hosting goes, um, we offer free um, HTTPS security for all of our sites, um, triple redundancy, nightly backups. That way, if something happens and, and your system goes down or you, know, um, you wanna make some changes, we do have backups to your system. And then uh, education. Education is really important to us. Um, we offer comprehensive training um, and really adaptive teaching styles. So either online or in person, um, we have really created a educational synopsis for each one of our products. So when you are migrating, you go through um, a training that will allow you to have access to a sandbox so you can practice, you can see your data on your system and really um, get a feel for how things work. We also provide complimentary ongo ongoing training um, for any new staff members that may join your team. Development. You know, one of the really strong features of open source for library products is that it is library driven enhancements that you see in here. So whether it's a suggestion from a librarian or a staff member, that's what you're seeing come into the, the development of these products. The Bywater staff do take active leadership in the community. Um, a lot of us are, are a part of either the release team or the documentation team, um, and we're at the, the monthly meeting, so we can either answer questions or be part of the decision-making. Any code that we write at Bywater Solutions, 100% of that is contributed back to the community. So that means anyone who's using Koha out there will have access to the code that we have created. Now I'll talk a little bit more in detail about some of the open source software that we support. So Koha, um, you know, just a quick history. Koha was started back in 1999 and the first release was in 2000. And it's a full featured ILS. So all modules, everything from circulation and patron management to the life cycle of an item with all of your technical services, a robust reports module, um, and collection development and more. You know, Koha is the most used ILS in the world. Um, and, and it truly is all about community. So you can be a part of that development. Aspen Discovery is a fully featured discovery system. So you can bring in all of your e-content, um, any type of databases or any type of archives or genealogy material that you have, and you bring that all into one location. So when your patrons and users search, they get a display of all formats of titles and one result, and they can see not only what's available in that traditional 
catalog, um, but also what do you have, you know, like in Creative Bug or Access 360 or um, in some of your EBSCO titles? And all of that information comes into one place. You know, they do a search for yoga, they'll find maybe an event that's going on when they do that search. So relevancy and ease of use is one of our main goals with Aspen Discovery. Next, we support Folio. And Folio is um, an open source library management platform, which allows you to bring in both print and electronic resources into one place. Um, Folio was developed around this open concept um, of linked data and being able to find all of your material in one place, you know, bringing libraries and vendors together. It's built on a system where you can build apps that your library uses, so you can really customize it for your library. In Coral. Coral is an open source ERM or an electronic resource management system. This allows you to manage your vendors, bring in your electronic resources to manage your subscriptions and workflows for those subscriptions. It has a usage statistics module, so you can keep track and look at the statistics of all of those different subscriptions and databases that you have. And then it also allows you to keep track of your licenses, when they expire, and then what's current. It also allows you to keep track of any type of terms tools that you have, as well as um, some of the information like, can this be can this database or subscription be used for ILL or course packs or course reserves? And then finally, LibKey. LibKey is an open source kiosk management system. And that allows you to um, bring in reservation for computer systems and time management. So that can be set up to all of your computer terminals. So if a, a patron walks up and they wanna make a reservation, or log into a computer, LibKey can manage that. It also does print and payment management. It is web-based, meaning that you can have it across multiple platforms um, and multiple branches. If you have a children's room or a front, um, like a first floor area, it can all be customized for those libraries and set up. And Bywater Solutions provides support for all of those products. So, if you're interested in learning more about how the migration process works like, I'll talk about that next. So for any one of the products that we mentioned, um, the first thing that we generally do is we work with your library, we do demos so you understand how the product works. Um, and then if you're interested in moving forward, we would get the contract signed. Once that contract is signed, the first thing we do is we have a kickoff call. And this is where you talk to members of the Bywater team. Generally, we have a support individual on, along with our data migration specialist, a systems librarian, an educator, and then also a member of our support team. On that call, we also have members of your team, anyone who will be a part of the implementation process or team, and then getting them together to you know, make a quick introduction of each other and those team members, and then set up a schedule for your implementation. After that kickoff call, we have data mapping meetings. This is where we create a visual aspect of your data, where we look at it, what it was in your legacy system, and then what it would look like in your new open source product. And you work with the data my data migration librarian to understand how it will come from your legacy to your new system. After that, you go through about a series of um, five to eight different implementation meetings. And this is where we talk about policy so we can understand your data and understand how things are working. After that, we go into training and your test system will have your data and your patrons on it. So you can understand in training how things will look, how things search, and how you actually catalog on a system and, and use that acquisitions with your data. After that, you have a period of testing. This is where staff will go in and get familiar and comfortable. We've, we've prepared testing plans that allows your staff to go in and really get comfortable with the system. Then we go to Go Live Weekend. You'll meet with our team again and prepare for the weekend where we extract that data and get it up on a new production system so your library is live. 
And after that, you have the continued support with Bywater Solutions. Again, we provide support where you can, you know, call us on the phone or submit a ticket, ask a question, and even jump on and do real-time chat so we can understand what you're looking for and answer your questions. So I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have about open source software um, or any type of question about migration or, or just what we do at Bywater Solutions. I don't see any questions in the chat yet, but please feel free if you have any questions, let us know. Thank you so much. Right. We've got a thank you for the information, but I don't see any questions. Absolutely. And um, you can feel free to visit uh, bywatersolutions.com. And there's always a contact us button on there as well. If you think of other questions that go on, we have a lot of free resources on our website as well. Um, just if you're interested in checking um, any of those out, we have a full educational suite um, where you can see information about open source and um, just what other libraries may be using um, uh, for those products. Me personally, I always like to look at and see what other libraries are doing. And um, if you go to our about section, we have one for library partners and you can see that information. Really cool. I love seeing maps and stuff like that. But <laughs> yeah, this is interactive. So you can kind of see where, um, just where some of our um, library partners are. Um, and that are using them. I don't know if, what kind of mix we have, but like um, Motlow State is uh, in Tennessee and they're on, um, they're on COHA. Oh, I see there's a couple questions. Um, what components are part of the interface? Is there a dashboard or something with different widgets? Yeah, I mean, you know, depending on what or which product you're talking about, like um, for Koha, um, this is just an example of what the Koha OPAC can look like. You know, you can integrate book lists, um, you can customize the search, you can link out your hours and contact information, um, you can set up chat widgets. Um, with Aspen Discovery, it's the same type of interface. You can really customize it, bring in your own look and feel, you know, make um, links out to things on the website. Um, and then the same thing goes for like the staff side of any of the components. Um, this is the back end of Koha. You know, you could bring in little widgets or calendars and um, they're pretty customizable. Yeah, those are really neat. I had I had I hadn't worked in the public library setting in a little bit, so but it's really neat to see the different kind of versions that you have available. Yeah, and you know, with with Koha, it can be customized. You know, you can turn things on and off. So, like you know, sometimes people say, "Well, we don't you know do any type of sales or anything at the collect money at the library itself, you know, those are, you could turn that module off or, you know, you don't really do serials. So, you know, you can turn things on and off. I always, what really makes my heart always happy is like in administration, you have these system preferences where you could say, you know what, I don't want to use that. So I'm just going to turn it off. And librarians like think about that when they build in the developments. And so it's, it's neat to see that, you know, in the system and be like, you know what, we're going to hide that on the OPAC because our patrons don't use that. So it's there's a lot of thought process behind some of the some of the development. And it's nice that they can do make that decision to do that and it makes it easy to do it. That's really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I don't see any more questions at this point. Um, since it is 3:30 Central and 4:30 Eastern, um, I guess we'll wrap it up unless anybody had any last minute questions. All right. Well, thank you so much for showing us all this, Jesse. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me and have a wonderful conference and a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.